Um, it's just going to be a short sharing actually. It's it's just one hour, but I hope it will be useful for you to um, plan for your next semester. Um, the reason, um, and, and I'm, I'm so thankful for um, to come as well, for inviting me to um, start the uh, webinar series uh, on teaching and learning this year. And um, I hope that um, the bits that I'm going to be sharing with you will be um, useful. So can, can I have my slides, please? Yeah. All right, thank you. So um, I prepared some slides um, and I hope that um, all the slides are gonna be um, available to you. And uh, please let me know if you feel like um, you wanna ask any questions in between, uh, please feel free to do so. Um, we have a chat box, um, so type your questions in the chat box. Um, I see so many familiar faces, uh, sorry, familiar names actually in the uh, participants list. So I'm really glad to see you guys again. Um, a lot of you met me in the um, PGDIP, um, what do you call it? The PGDIP program. Yeah, so these are um, the main takeaways for today. Um, I was asked to look at um, what are the things that we can learn from each other. Um, in that we've already run um, most of our courses last year since um, March, April um, online. And, you know, it looks like we're going to be continuing this um, in the next year. So um, it's, it's, it doesn't seem to, it's going to be um, stopping, to be honest. Jadi, um, I think it's nice to have um, a platform to basically share. Um, and um, yeah, so these are the two basically takeaways from today, um, deconstructing the learning experience. Um, what is it that our students um, faced um, when they were learning with us yeah, online? And also how do we um, create um, an environment um, in which the students feel that it's, it's like, um, it's almost normal. It's not a new, new normal, but it's almost normal, yeah? So um, how do we create that, that that interaction space in order for um, people to be able to um, um, react to us and respond to us. It's not gonna be the same as um, obviously in face-to-face in -face classes. Um, I think that is, um, um, uh, I, I think a horrible, um, uh, what do you call it? It's, it's, it's a horrible um, uh, yardstick that we put onto ourselves. If we compare what we do online and what we do face to face, because when we expect um, the things that happen in our face to face classes, and um, we want to emulate exactly as that in online uh, platforms, I think this is where we get really frustrated because, because our perspective about, you know, being able to see the students, to see their faces, to see their reactions, the body language, the way that they react to our questions or even our slides, you know, um, those things we can't see because most of them would turn off um, their screens. So why do we put ourselves into such pressure um, that um, we want to see the same kind of um, reactions when we are teaching online, yeah? So it's, it's not gonna work. So um, these are um, some of the things that I, I would like for you to um, think about, yeah? In, 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 in planning for your new semester. So um, I wanna ask you this one question first before we um, proceed to the rest of um, my, my talk today. What is one major challenge that you have faced since you first conducted um, remote teaching? So if you can, um, could you pull up the, um, the chat box um, right now and then write your um, responses? What is one major challenge you have faced since you first started um, remote teaching? The impact of teaching, connection problem, time management, yeah, student reactions, poor internet connection. You feel like talking to yourself, I know what you mean. Yeah, students behavior reaction, yeah, social presence, lack of motivation, feedback. Yeah, and we're not sure whether we're engaging or not, isn't it? Yeah. S students passive, student engagement, 
not sure if students really watch and listen to lectures. Interesting. Adapting to technology skills. Yeah, that's true. And distractions are everywhere. That's correct. Yeah, difficult to engage. Getting student uh, sessions to be interactive. Yeah, that's more pedagogical. Thank you, Joseph. Bully. Wow, that's interesting. Interesting. I cannot control the whole class as usual. Yeah. Thinking students are there without being, being sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, now, if I can sum up a little bit, um, it's, it's mostly about control. Yeah, it's mostly about control. It's mostly about we're not being able to, um, um, you know, sort of uh, pace ourselves when we're teaching online. Like, for instance, even now I'm talking to you. I don't know whether you're watching me or you're checking your Facebook or, you know, you're doing your Instagram posts and stuff like that. Um, it's it's, it's, it's um, that control that we don't have when we are teaching online. Yeah, we, we are not able to... Um, actually see for ourselves that um, the students are actually listening to us and, and that, um, that void that we see from the blank screens. Instead of looking at faces, we're looking at blank screens and just their names. So um, we, we are not sure um, what are the things that's going on on the other side of the screen as well. Yeah, because that's actually, you know, if you're teaching 100 students, there's actually 100 scenarios behind that screen that we don't know about. You know, there, there have been, obviously, if you read the news, there's, there's been an increase in, in um, you know, domestic violence, um, parents losing jobs, um, and, and this, the, the kids have to step in. And, and all these things are um, real. There are real, real issues that students, um, you know, may not be facing when they were on campus. Um, in, in campus, we also see students who are not engaged, even when they come to our lectures yeah even when they come to our lectures even when they they, they sit in our tutorial classes and and uh, we know this because there's many other things that's um also going around um in in their heads while they are attending our classes yeah so why is it so uh, blown up when we are teaching online yeah so these things these issues are actually related to the 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 our psychological um, uh, attachment to the um, the screen itself, the screen culture. Because when we see things on the screen, we expect things to be a bit more serious. Yeah, things a bit uh, has to be a bit more presentable, and that uh, we expect all the good things to appear on the screen, and the not so good things are not going to appear on the screen. So those are the things which is um, expected. Yeah, because that is our screen culture. And when we teach online, suddenly we are on the screen. Yeah, and then we expect um, that all these values are also translated in the way that we teach, in that, oh, it has to be presentable, it has to be, you know, um, uh, students have to react the way that we expect them to be and they have to be on their toes yeah basically so um ini yang kadang-kadang bila bila kita punya expectation is quite high um uh, this becomes a frustration and obviously it becomes a stress as well for 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 us yeah um so this is from literature. I just want to share with you. Um, there's tons and tons of um, academics who've been writing um, since the remote teaching, the emergency remote teaching um, uh, began yeah, in, in March, April last year. And they quoted the same things as what you guys wrote in the chat box. Technical issues is number one. Um, I, I worked with a group of um, uh, GPNS um, officers in, in April, March, last, April, uh, May last year. And uh, we wanted to find out how the teachers in Sarawak, 45,000 teachers in Sarawak were coping with, um, you know, teaching online. And 90% of the data talked about technical difficulties. So we're not just talking about things that's happening in the schools, but also, you know, 
uh, things at the university as well. So it's it's everyone's facing this. And if you read things from even the US, they are also talking about um, technical issues as well, schedule problems, distractions everywhere. Yeah, poor online content, poor online content. This is um, one one of the things that kept creeping up, but it, it's not actually highlighted as one of the the foremost um, um, issues. Yeah, in in remote teaching. Poor online pedagogy. Um, there have been many, many instances where parents are sitting with their, um, uh, what do you call it, the children. Yeah, whether it's it's for school or university, you know, um, there have been many anecdotes of of parents actually listening in. Yeah, to how their, their, their children are learning. And um, we've also been getting... Um, what do you call it, uh, comments or feedback from parents um, to, to say that, um, you know, the way that we are, we are teaching online is, is distasteful, yeah, because they are actually listening in. Kalau dalam bilik kuliah, yeah, kalau di, di campus, no parents are coming in. So this is, again, another challenge that we have never faced before. Yeah, jadi, um, well, these are some of the things yang uh, we have to get used to. Yeah, we have to get used to. And then um, this is also the reason why I always, always recommend anyone who talks to me, I always recommend jangan lama sangat on the screen. Yeah, jangan lama sangat on the screen. Use as as minimal as possible. If you can record, record pendek-pendek. Yeah, so um, because this also helps us in the way that we... Um, um, apa nama deliver yeah the, the the best version that we can uh, when when we are online um, lack of motivation both on the parts of teachers and students because yes this is a new learning game yeah it's 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 a new game completely if you're not used to teaching online you're not used to talking to the camera you you wouldn't this this is a huge um uh, it's a it's a steep you know it's a leap of faith really <laughs> it's a steep learning curve for a lot of us yeah but you know what small orang is facing the same thing yeah everyone on campus is talking is is facing the same things but are we talking about it yeah that's my question to you are we talking about these issues are we asking for help are we asking for training are we sharing our um, experiences with each other, yeah. Time-consuming resources. This one also came from a lot of countries. Yang mana uh, ramai um, uh, educators, they tend to be quite um, industrious. Where you know they 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 say, oh, I want to um, give all my three-hour lecture. Make sure it's all full three hours, and then I I get the students to listen in, you know, live lecture and then listen to what I have to say. So kadang-kadang those things can um, uh, affect yeah, the way that um, uh, the, the, the students um, follow the content that we are trying to teach them. Yeah, because they're terlalu lama and then it, obviously it takes up, um, you know, the, the data consumption that students have, the limited data consumption that they have. So, um, uh, yeah, it is a steep learning curve. This one is also reported in many literature. Isolation and disengagement. Yeah, um, isolation is also um, one thing that also I noticed the theme was creeping up, yeah, especially towards um, the end of last year. And then uh, particularly in uh, Europe and, and America, they were going through Christmas breaks and stuff like that. So people felt that there was there was no social um, engagement um, at all. Yang mana? Bila kita dalam kelas, when students come into our class, what they do first is when they come in, they will talk to their friends, they put their bags, they take out their, their notepads. Yeah, there's someone next to them. Yeah, there's someone to at least ask something. But when you are teaching online, you don't have that environment. They don't have anyone sitting next to them. Perhaps yang duduk sebelah tu mak dia ataupun adik dia belajar you know, tingkatan part katakanlah. Yeah? So the environment is different. Jadi, um, that, that, that's why a lot of times students are also struggling with this to, to, to feel that um, they don't have people around them to, to support yeah? that, that, that whole um, engagement process. So this is where kadang-kadang um, um, students feel that they are not motivated yeah? to, to, to want to um, invest time and effort yeah? into their courses. Um, so, I want to talk about um, uh, yeah your imagination. What what is it that 
you would like, yeah, what is your ideal remote teaching scenario? So can you um, write what, what comes to mind right now in the chat box? What is your ideal? Kalau you dah tahu what happened last year, yeah, and all the challenges that you have faced. So what is it that you envision that would be an ideal situation for you to teach remotely? Can you write that in the chat box, please? Yeah, small classes, Dr. Cairo. Yeah, small classes is quite ideal. How many how many class uh, how many per per class is ideal, Dr. Kyril? If you, I can ask you again. <laughs> Cameras turn on. Yes, that's right, Joseph. <laughs> Fifteen per class. Yeah, that would be perfect. Smaller discussion groups, Isabel. That's right. Yeah, you guys are so lucky in FPSK. You have um, the small rooms, good content, good internet. <laughs> Hologram. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So most of us actually hope that you know the technology bits are settled. Yeah. It's 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 a bit more um uh, apa nama, uh approachable for the students. Yeah. Untuk untuk go through online on online teaching. Yeah. It's 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 more fantastic to have you know face to face. But yeah. <laughs> Ideally, yeah, stable internet access. Yeah, that's right. So if you notice, your 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 answers is all about environment, the environment in which um, you know we, we we would like that teaching scenario to uh, to be like, yeah. Um, and um, what do you call it? The things, the tools that would enable this to happen, like for instance, the internet, the um, access to PCs or laptops. Um, you know how 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 well students' um, technology skills would be able to um, deal with all these things. Yeah. So keep that in mind. I want you to hold that uh, thought. Yeah, about your ideal remote teaching scenario, and we're going to revisit this at the end of uh, this talk. So um, I'm just going to run through a little bit. Uh, with you. Now, how learning works. Um, those of you who are familiar with um, the courses that we teach in PGDIP, um, you, you, you know what this is. Yeah? In learning, there has to be a chunk of um, you know, the, the, the content that we're trying to teach, which is the input. And then from that input, there must be some kind of an activity in which we get the students to use what they are learning. Yeah? And, and this is where um, the making mistakes come in, you know, and the correcting, the feedback and what have you happens. And obviously at the end, we want to measure whether um, the students um, get the input that, you know, they, they have been presented with. So now, how teaching works. Um, I'm sorry, this appears quite green. Is it, is it horrible on the screen? Is it okay? All right, sorry. Um, the um, what do you call it? Look at the the, the green boxes. Um, the green boxes is how teaching works, and what we do is we need to do the preparation first before the input happens, before the activity happens, before the testing happens, and this preparation is not really seen by the students. We do this in our own time, in our own effort, in the way that we know how. Yeah. So this preparation thing happens, and then we go to the instruction and practice where we conduct all the three things, which is the input, activity, and testing, and we make sure that, um, that there is some kind of a communication, some engagement that happens so that students will actually understand the um, uh, content knowledge that we're presenting to them. And the last bit is the assessment and transfer, which is um, really about um, how we're going to measure. Yeah, a lot of um, um, mistakes, I would say, um, that I've seen in the, in, in the many years I've been teaching PGDIP is that when, when I, I, I talk to the um, novice lecturers, eh, people who just started teaching, um, a lot of time we confuse what should be input and what should be activity. Yeah, kadang-kadang the activity is so busy that it actually doesn't address the input. 
Yeah, input ni adalah the actual thing that we're teaching. The activity is how we engage them and how we get them to use what we're teaching. Ya, yeah, jadi ini adalah satu skill yang kita perlu. This is what we call pedagogical skills. Yang mana um, uh, it has to be coherent with the the goals that we want to achieve um, through um, our courses. Yeah, and obviously this has has got to be congruent with the tests that we want to have at the end of the um, uh, the the learning. So macam mana pula later dia akan transfer this knowledge into a different setting. That is the ideal bit ya yeah, yang mana they can actually use uh, what we're doing in this course katakanlah for another course with somebody else so these are things that we have to juggle the green boxes are the things that we have to juggle as instructors ya yeah, as instructors now i i break it down a bit further those of you who have done pgd with me you know um i think so, a lot of you would recognize these words When you do the preparation, you are working on the gaining of attention, you're informing the objectives, you stimulate recall of prior learning. All these things have to be planned. How do you attract um, students to want to um, uh, learn with you? Yeah. How do you attract students to the content that you're teaching? How do you present? If you go to the instruction and practice, how do you present it? How do you make it work? Yeah, how do you make it understandable? How do you provide the learning guidance? Now, a lot of times, um, the the literature that we've been reading and also observations that we have done in schools, particularly, is that the learning guidance is the one that a lot of teachers do not address. I'm not too sure about the university because we're not really talking about this, but a lot a, a lot of examples that has been seen that has been commented on are talking about presenting the learning stimulus but neglecting the learning guidance. Yeah, learning guidance ialah bila kita um, gunakan the stimulus and to make sure that they actually understand what they're learning. Yeah, and then from there, we elicit the performance. Bagaimana kita um, apa nama, tengok eh, apa yang dia belajar, what they actually understand, and um, to, to use it in a situation, in a scenario, in a context, in a setting, just to test, to see whether they, their comprehension is at the level where we need them to be. Yeah, and then obviously the last bit is the feedback. Feedback is very, very important. Kalau feedback tak ada, it's almost like um, you're just reading a magazine. Yeah, feedback tak ada. It's like um, you're just reading, you know, a newspaper, and that's it. It's just information. It's not actually knowledge that that is sinking in. I understand that knowledge is not something that um, people would automatically get. Like, you know, it's 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 um, getting knowledge is almost like macam kita, you know, when 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 you go out running or jogging, yeah, people run on the same track. Yeah, you can see people who are fast, people who are slow, people who take their time, people who stop and stare and continue again. This is what's happening with our learners. Yeah, the track is the same. Apa yang kita sediakan, yeah, which is our learning content. Tapi bagaimana the students are actually following that track is it depends on their um, stamina. <laughs> it depends on their interests. It it depends on uh, what they are um, uh, apa nama, um, uh, emotionally attached to. Kalau lah kata kalah um, apa nama they they love birds and you ask them to go jogging. Obviously, bila nampak you know a, 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 a group of um, you know different types of birds on on trees that they lalu they will stop and stare yeah they they stop and probably take pictures even so in, this is all the things that we have to consider bila kita mengajar yeah that the students menggunakan different competencies and interests and obviously this leads to their motivation as well in terms of bagaimana dia nak um apa nama invest their time and effort in the course that we're doing yeah so the last bit is the testing which is This is where um, we try to find out, like how much is it that they are learning, yeah, from us? How do we assess um, uh, this performance, and what kind of performance are we looking at? Are we looking at um, apa nama, the way that they write? Are we looking at the way that they talk about it? Are we talking? Uh, are, are we looking at the way that they argue something? Now, 
a lot of um, assessment um, apa nama um, um, modules eh, yang kita dah nampak ialah dia tak congruent it's not congruent with what we are doing in the instruction and practice ya yang mana kadang-kadang um, bila um, apa when you come up with activities when you're creating um, the learning guidance what happens is that um, you you teach them katakanlah eh, to to talk about a topic ya yeah, to talk about a topic they elaborate they talk about the definitions the different concepts how different people argue things ya yeah. so um, that happens in the learning guidance and the feedback is also about that Yeah, the listening performance, the, the feedback is also about talking. When come to assessment, tiba-tiba it's a writing um, uh, test, writing um, assessment. This is where dia punya learning skill tu um, is not congruent. Sebab apa yang kita buat ialah X, apa yang kita test adalah Y. Ya, yeah? so this I think needs to be um, incorporated properly bila kita plan the course itself before the course um, starts. So it's always always useful to have your own plan. Yeah, macam mana you're going to run um, your lessons now that people do not want to um, apa nama uh, or, or do not prefer ya yeah, untuk untuk duduk dengar sampai 5 jam 6 jam punya lecture. So how do you deliver this? How do you put it together for an online um, uh, format? Yeah. So, um, untuk untuk the first bit, which is the preparation, you can communicate with students at least a day before your class. Yeah. Make a list. Dalam WhatsApp, I always do this. Dalam WhatsApp, I would have a list. I would I will say tomorrow's our class. This is what we're going to do. Um, and I would expect you to read blah, 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 or I, I want you to watch blah, blah, blah. So all these things are prepared ahead of time, ahead of time. Yeah. So tell them what they are expected to do before they come to class. So in that way, kita pun rasa macam at least we have told them whether they buat ke tidak is a different story tau. <laughs> so um, tapi at least the preparation is there. Then they would they would know what are the objectives. Yeah. And then they would know that this maybe relate to something that they've learned in a previous class or previous lesson, previous course. Um, all these things are prepared ahead of time. Yeah, Upload your materials ahead of time and tell them where do you want them to um, look at the materials. A lot of times we see um, ELIP being populated with many, many reading materials. Now, um, year in, year out, students would say like, Um, we actually don't read what you put because we don't know what you want. Yeah, jadi it's useful to have a little explanation about what is it that you want students to get out from the readings. Yeah, just a simple instruction to say that, can you tell me one key point from this reading? You know, can you summarize in 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 40 words what this reading means to you in terms of the the unit that we're going to be covering? Uh, the unit we're going to be covering in the um apa nama in 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 the class today you know so at least ada direction jadi dia pun rasa macam dia tak buang masa ya yeah? instead of us dumping 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 uh, apa tu reading materials banyak 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 dalam uh, elip eh so a tip all right now providing input input is where um we want to present ya yeah? what what we know um apa tu dalam the content Um, that, that we're teaching. Now, when we want to gain their attention, use some kind of a, an ice breaking. Use, you know, I use a lot of Miro. I use a lot of um, mural, M-U-R-A-L, um, because they have beautiful templates on there where when I get students to come in, they can actually use um, the templates and, and they can brainstorm using sticky notes. Um, those of you who have been in my PG Deep class last year, Um, you know how I love sticky notes, and 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 you've been to the gamification center where you know we use all these movable boards and stuff, and and it's very frustrating not to be able to do that, yeah. So 
one of the alternatives that I found is um, when we have, we use an interactive online whiteboard where we get students to use it because, you know, some of them are the template yang sesuai. Eh? Some templates is is actually quite useful for 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 them to um, think about what they know. Yeah, macam, uh, there, there's one template that I really like um, and I use this a lot with my uh, final year project students. Um, it's, it's called um, idea prioritization. Yeah, it's called idea prioritization where um, I get them to brainstorm all of the ideas that they have about their FYP. And then I bring them to the graph. And then I say, you know, based on these things that you want to find out, can we plot yeah, on this graph? Nak tengok yang mana satu yang can, can be prioritized. And then what is, which, which of these is actually doable yeah, in your project? So that saves a lot of time. Because they feel they're invested in the um, idea construction in FYP, yeah. So um, and and these are some of the things that you guys can can also try out as well, yeah. Um, the presentation of the learning stimulus, um, I tend to go towards recording um, the videos, yeah. Um, the out uh, the 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 chunk the learning chunk that um, I would like my students to learn. Jadi, um, it's it's easier when um, apa nama, when they have the opportunity, um, they can go on YouTube and they can um, what do you call it? They can um, download, they can watch it. They don't have to download even. They can just watch it at their own time. So the preparation of the videos ideally should come at least a week before your actual class. So um, you, apa nama, you 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 have that time for them to um, digest the learning um, the 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 learning process the, the learning content itself yeah so when we're providing the learning guidance this is where um, i normally use my live classes yeah my live classes i don't present the content anymore the live classes are actually where um, i get them to answer um, interactive quizzes i use kahoot a lot um, i subscribe to the premium uh, version of kahoot because i find that um, you know, you're able to actually in, have interactive lesson. Uh, and then this template is only available in the premium version. And um, what you call it, what, what you can do is um, you can get them to answer, you know, quick questions, stimulus, yeah, throughout um, the session. And you can pause, you can stop, you can ask them to uh, give feedback, apa yang dia tak faham. And then um, all these things are actually related to um, the the uh, YouTube videos that I've already prepared for them, yeah. So um, if they have gone through the YouTube videos, ataupun dah tengok satu dua, kadang-kadang dia tak tengok semua pun. Dia tengok satu dua. When they come to me in in the uh, live class, they have an idea of what exactly they need to learn, yeah. So that provision of the learning guidance uh, would happen during the live classes, yeah. So um, give give a lot of scenarios for them to understand. Um, the input that they need to um, uh, digest yeah, for, for, for that week or for that unit that you're teaching. So the activity bit, bit is where um, you elicit performance. You have to create some practice activities, um, create some ways that um, students would be able to see um, how, how much do they understand about the learning chunk that um, they are learning, yeah. Um, how much do they, do they uh, remember? How much do they? Um, uh, how much are they able to apply it in a situation? So you give them this this practice um, space, yeah. It can be dalam ilip. It could be you know just a, a series of quizzes. I use that a lot as well. A series of quizzes, and then um, and then make sure other feedback. Make sure other feedback. So round it up at the end of the week. You put a little bit of a um, apa nama, summary uh, to tell to tell the students that you actually see them uh, doing the quizzes, yeah. Uh, you actually see them trying, yeah. And then these are some of the common mistakes, yeah. Even if it's on Google Form, if you you prefer to use Google Form, no tak apa, it's okay. Tapi kan ada Google Form tu ada uh, analysis. You can use that analysis because a Google Form can tell you which ones of the quizzes. Um, the items that students would have the most problems with, yeah, use that in your summary so that they would know that um, you are paying attention, uh, you're, you're, you're trying, 
Jadi um, and then kalau macam dia tak participate pun dia tahu kata okey ini adalah problematic and mungkin dia akan minta kita datang balik to that area. Ya, yeah? so there is a way for us to macam test or to see how much exactly do they know about um, the learning chunk. Ya. Yeah? And um, the last bit is on the testing which is um, where you can create one quiz after your live session you can have one quiz at the end where you can say you know um, just to measure how much you understand about this this content um, let's let's do this quickly yeah with the rest of the class it can be take home it can be assigned at towards the end of of, of the class itself but um, uh, what i want to to draw your attention on is on the enhancing the retention and transfer Yeah, this is where kadang-kadang kita kita uh, selalu komen eh, dekat kampus where uh, kenapa ya student dah year year three yang dia belajar year one year two tu langsung tak ingat. Yeah, this is because the retention and the learning transfer tu tidak mungkin tidak uh, begitu effective, and that's the reason why they cannot bring it to whatever that they're learning right now. So this is where we we need to do a bit of homework lah, uh, create. Uh, some uh, you know scenarios examples where they actually need to solve something they need to tell you what they think they need to um, uh, show you how it works yeah the reason why a lot of times they don't connect is because they don't relate yeah they don't connect because they don't relate and then it's our job to make them relate macam mana kita nak make sure yang apa nama yang kita ajar whatever that we're teaching they can say oh you know what i actually went through this i didn't understand it now i know that my classmates are also struggling with it yeah and now i can see maybe there is a there is a way for me to to use this knowledge that i'm learning yeah in a context that i can relate to this is something that um this is where your creativity comes in Yeah, this is where you can use your imagination really um, as to how you can spice this up and make it um, fun and even playful. Yeah. So, um, so how do you reimagine uh, remote teaching and how to? At the same time, I put the word here. How to uh, the question here? How to stay relevant and sane at the same time? Uh, because it has been a struggle. I will I will tell you this. I've been teaching, um, you know, for the past 20 odd years in Unimas. Those of you who know me, um, you know, I came to Unimas in 1994. This is my first job. <laughs> I think I'm going to retire at this job as well. Um, and last year, 2020, and perhaps this year as well, is, is I think the most challenging Um, year ever in teaching and and um, it's very hard to to apa nama to to keep your sanity intact really you know when there's so much pressure to to do well but at the same time you go like oh my god there's so many things that i need to relearn yeah um uh, and yeah so going back to this input activity testing we need to 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 judge this up Yeah, you need to judge this out. Macam mana kita nak apa tu? Make sure that what we lead, what we are providing the students are good content, content yang um, apa nama? You chunk in order for them to understand. Yeah, jangan letak semua sekali all at one go. Pecahkan. Yeah, make it to become something which is bite size. Sekarang the buzzword right now is bite size. Yeah small little chunks yeah and then um, uh, introduce it slowly to the students because remember what i told you students ni macam macam kita buat running track lah yeah for the course is the running track ada yang berlari ada yang berjalan ada yang makan sambil berjalan you know so um, we have to cater for this yeah we have to cater for this and remember you need to not control this process Yeah, dia tak macam masa, masa kita di dalam kelas where um, we can control the process where we can say okay class let's take a break five minutes we'll come back again after this tak ada yeah in 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 online uh, classes you are expected to go on and on and on yeah and so the same thing as your activities make the activities um, jangan pakai activity yang sama all the time this is where you can become creative Yeah, and find what are the things that you can do to make it a bit more playful, um, but at the same time, it's not losing um, the the apa nama 
uh, uh, the, the gist that you're trying to teach, yeah, and also in testing as well. So I think um, the the pandemic has also enabled us to read a lot more than we we uh, we could even. Um, before this kalau dulu um, apa kadang-kadang kita baca sekali lalu je kan but, uh, you know reading materials about our content tapi sekarang sebab things are all online uh, we don't have any um, what do you call it reason not to find out about things kalau tak tahu kita boleh tanya yeah so that's the reason why kalau boleh kita um, apa nama um, focus on making our content expertise tu stronger and stronger while we're teaching online because this will come in into the way that you are teaching the students the students will know if if you know if if they are learning uh, from a person who understands something really really well and and this come off very very easily dalam um, uh, teaching yeah whether it's online ataupun offline so um, in the preparation bit um, prepare your contents plus a brief summary bagi sikit um, apa tu uh, macam teaser lah ya yeah? uh, what is it they're going to be learning dalam unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 so you 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 maintain that ya yeah? throughout all the units that you're going to be um, teaching and then bring liveliness of a class environment into the session what i do is very simple um dr fataya who sits next to my room in in the uh, faculty She listens like every time I I start my class. I would start my class um, at least half an hour or 20 minutes before the actual time, and then I would turn on songs that they like, and then the students actually like it, and 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 they come in just to listen to the songs, you know. And walaupun is you know it's it's false hope, <laughs> nobody's gonna be singing or whatever. Tapi sebenarnya they enjoy it because they feel like oh my god, there's a There's a space for them to um, apa nama tunggu sekejap, yeah, the, while waiting for the class to begin. And then the other thing is um, call on the student's name. I feel that this um, the the best thing about teaching remote uh, remotely is that I don't have to guess students' names because <laughs> every box would have their name. Yeah, every box would have their name, and you can call on these names. There's some uh, apa nama instructors who have been uh, very creative using the, the the wheel. Yeah, you can put in their names and you can you know mine the wheel. Boleh juga, it's fun. Um, and take time off uh, when you begin the class to talk about things which is off topic. Tak payah tentang kelas terus, ya. Yeah? Um, something about what they're doing or something that's on the headline on the day itself. So make it a bit more human, ya. Yeah? So it's not really um, about the course course itself saja. And um, on the instruction and practice, um, I I I suggest that you can use um, point based system to help them quantify, ya, yeah, the learning targets. You can do this to say, um, okay, if somebody finish task one, task two, task three, katakanlah untuk a certain um, unit, you will get X number of points. Jadi dia nampak progression, ya. Yeah? They, they they can see the progression of of their effort. Um, motivate students with rewards and praises. Students enjoy this. I notice if we continuously do this um, in the class, tapi don't do the same thing at same, apa nama, all the time. You have to vary it. The way that you praise them, the way that you reward them, um, apa nama, uh, use different different ways of of uh, apa, uh, uh, saying uh, you're doing a great job. Yeah, you're doing a fabulous job. So um, have have this positivity flow. Yeah, in in within uh, the, the way that you're teaching. So a single positive comment lets a student know that their course instructor is still invested in their learning. I believe in this. Yeah, in all of my classes, whenever students send me um, um, apa nama, um, message, um, email, dalam WhatsApp, walaupun kadang-kadang lambat, they don't have the um, apa um, uh, responses and stuff like that. When they reply, I always tell them that you know you're doing a great job. Thank you for working so hard. Thank you for you know investing time on this. Because when they hear us saying that, they feel that we are paying attention. Yeah, kalau dalam kelas kita boleh pay attention sebab kita boleh tengok. Yeah, we can see them physically in front of us. Tapi bila on the screen. We don't know when they're going to be reading the message. Jadi when they read the message. Walaupun you tengah marah, ya, yeah, dengan maybe kerja the very lousy or whatever, use 
positive words first. Yeah, use positive words first when uh, we're giving feedback. Katakanlah, yeah, to 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 get them to not give up. That's the, that's the one thing that kita tak nak. Kita tak nak they give up. Ya, yeah, kita tak nak they halfway they pull out and kata macam, oh, I don't want to um, study this because I I cannot tahan. You know. So um, that's that's the that's the one thing that i think um we we can we can slowly do yeah dalam our conversations with students and the assessment and transfer like i said tadi use your creativity in the way that you want to um measure what they know yeah you can also use um online peer review i use this a lot when i use um online peer review i i come up with the rubrics and then sometimes rubrics are quite skeletal yeah and then um i tell them okay the points are the points are um like apa nama um ada lima so um you tell me what should be the point one, two, three, four. you know so they decide kadang-kadang if you notice um students punya uh, evaluation is more strict than the instructor so it's quite interesting to see how um apa kita come in and and uh, buat interventions eh untuk untuk uh, help them understand what they are they're doing and and you can also use this uh, virtual scoreboards um and and apa nama keep one scoreboard throughout the semester uh, you can letak siapa top person for this week siapa top person for the next week you know so you can you can um uh, rotate the names you know and and get them to uh, be more involved jadi students appreciate bila kita um sebut nama mereka yeah when they know that uh, we actually um, acknowledge that they are working hard on the work that we are assigning to them yeah um so this is an example of um um apa nama my um one of my uh, units that I was teaching this past semester which is um instructional design uh, instructional technology course in FSKPM and then um my instruction is that I, I will tell them what is um the week is about and the link um to the materials is here and then I tell them we're going to meet zoom meeting and then um i i said i did not uh, for this week the one that i'm showing to you i did not um buat uh, youtube videos just as how normally that lam class saya saya akan buat youtube videos saya akan explain um all of the slides tapi what i did for this one week and i wanted to show you is i changed it into a cartoon jadi i use pixton p i x t o n and then i came up with this um it took me about about an hour i think for each of this so there are different topics um um apa nama but it explains the the gist of what they need to do so dalam class when i meet them offline uh, sorry online uh, in the live class um i talk about the 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 main things that they have um read through the cartoon ya yeah, jadi um the content dia tak lari pun so reading material dah ada dalam elip and also this cartoon is to help them see what are the main things they need to understand Okay, so um, in the, my last bit of of the talk is about the how do we make sure that things are normal, and um, and and how do we um, apa nama use uh, social interaction yeah dalam class. Now um, I want to highlight this um, this importance about um, in, incorporating gratitude as part of your pedagogy. Yeah, gratitude as a pedagogy, meaning that um, now a lot of people are um, feeling worried. You know, family members are affected by COVID. Either some family members have passed because of COVID. Uh, parents lost work because of COVID. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty and the security, um, the insecurity that students are are facing. Not all, but a lot of them. Not all, but a lot of them. But this doesn't mean that we should discount our responsibility as an educator. So, bila kita um, uh, integrate, yeah, uh, gratitude as part of the pedagogy, the students feel at least much like there is a safe place, yeah, when they are with us in our class. There is a safe place in which they can um, have someone who will say something positive to them at that point in time. Ya, yeah, walaupun kita punya live class tu cuma 30 minit, tapi at least it's a positive um, space for them to to hear someone uh, bagi tahu kata okay you're doing you're doing well. Maybe you can try a bit harder by doing blah blah blah. 
Ya, jadi cara kita nak cakap tu I think kena um, apa nama kena ingatlah we have to remember that the student's well-being is is at the center of this. Ya, yeah, at the center of of the way of uh, the way that we um, construct our pedagogy. So it's not about us, it's also about it's, it's the students because they are the product of our work, ya. Yeah? Now, um, infuse the online space with genuine humanity. Yeah, because kita tak tahu what's going on in their houses. We don't know dia share laptop dengan adik-adik for instance. You know, um, kita tak tahu dia punya internet connection um, kenapa, you know, um, um, asyik tak stabil. You know, kenapa they don't make an effort to go to, you know, some other place bila nak study katakanlah. Um, you know, these things are actually beyond us. Tapi apa yang kita boleh buat ialah kita prepare the best that we can. So the ideal bit, macam katakanlah um, apa nama nak sediakan input tadi, ya. Yeah? Make sure you record your your lectures. Bila masa dia nak access, it's really up to them. But at least when they want to do it, when they want to go through the content, the content is available. Ya, yeah? the content is available. Um, and um, ask yourselves this, you know what? You can you can use this in your in your um, sessions. What's the most meaningful thing that you've learned, you know, in this unit in this session? What is the muddiest point? Those of you dalam PGD, saya so tanya ni. What was the muddiest point? Apa yang paling um, apa? You tak sure, yeah? What are you grateful today? That what are you grateful for today? Yeah. What are the things that you feel um, apa? Um, you feel blessed for? Ya, sebab kadang-kadang bila kita um, apa tengok things um, in 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 a way that we want to achieve um, the um, when we want to achieve something ya, kita punya learning goals. Kadang-kadang kita lupa tengok, you know what? Actually, all these are blessings. Ya, small little blessings yang kita should be grateful for. Ya, so and then you can ask even like, what do you wish to learn more? If you have a group yang memang motivated, ask them. What is it that you wish to know more? Yeah, what is it that you learn from outside the class that you can bring here? So offer that as well. Kadang-kadang they see perspective yang kita tak nampak sebab kita sebagai instructor kan kadang our our um, uh, apa our insights are quite tunnel vision kadang-kadang ya kadang-kadang on some uh, apa nama kita kita pun tak tahu semua ya. Jadi minta dia orang bawa what they are experiencing mungkin you know um, they they see things outside of the class that they can actually transfer into. Um, into what we're learning right now yeah so us create that uh, opportunity so that they can they can see that yeah that we are appreciative of their effort um okay next one do <laughs> show your face show your face show your face jangan you switch off camera <laughs> um uh, joseph kita appreciate Uh, students buka kamera, kita pun kena buka kamera jugalah. Ya, yeah, walaupun students tak buka kamera, is fine. Kan, tapi kita kena buka kamera. Because you know why? This is the normalcy. Bila normal mengajar pun, you still have, you know, somebody sitting in front of you, mengajar, bercakap, ya. Yeah? Jadi, that is normal. Have that, have that, um, apa nama, Uh, 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 presence, ya, yeah, so that dia tahu kata this is not a recording lecturer ni ada, ya, yeah, lecturer ni tengah cakap ada depan saya ni, ya, yeah. whether dia tengok recording tu on a different time pun tak apa, it's okay, tapi masa kelas buka kamera, ya, yeah, so, so that they can see your face um, open your live um, class, 15 minutes before your schedule kalau boleh, ya, yeah, this is where They can talk to each other. You just tell them, you know, this is your free time. You can talk to your friends. Uh, it's fine. You don't have to listen in if you don't want to. It's okay. Yeah. And then uh, this is very important. This is also what I learned through uh, teaching remotely. Leave the live class session open until all the students leave. All the students leave. Meaning that you jangan bila dah habis pukul sebelas, you tutup semua. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, class. See you next week. Tutup leave meetings terus, you know, end meeting terus. No. Leave it on until all the students leave. Because you know why? Macam dalam kelas, in normal kuliah, there will be one, two student who will come up to you, 
you know, and ask, okay, um, tadi saya tak faham, tapi saya tak berani tanya. You know what I mean? So, macam mana, macam mana, um, apa nama, kita boleh um, address this. Stay on sekejap. Stay on sekejap, ya. Yeah? Um, wait until all of them have have left because there will be that one, two student yang akan tanya after class yang mana dia malu nak tanya semasa kelas. Yeah? So, um, remind the students things that they need to complete. Memang akan banyak assignments. Um, apa nama, kalau kalau uh, boleh prioritizekan the assignments for them. You can do that as well. Yeah? Um, check if they need help. Kadang-kadang they miss uh, assignment deadlines because there are some things that they cannot cope with, you know. Macam last week, I just found out one of my undergraduate um, students, the whole family was tested positive for COVID. So she's the only one who didn't get it because she didn't come out from her room, you know. So, But it's traumatizing for her because, you know, there's a lot of things that she cannot do in the room and then she has to stay in, in the house and then she has to stay in her own room and then the whole family, um, apa nama, affected. So uh, things like this, kita tak experience, tapi students have experience, yeah? Um, ask them how they're coping learning from home, for instance. You know, um, tanya them soalan, yeah? Um, you have a space, ada ada table untuk, untuk um, apa nama, untuk belajar? Ada tempat, ada light tak untuk belajar? Yeah, electricity stable tak dekat rumah? You know, because there are some of them yang duduk di kampung, electricity tak stable. So bagaimana, how, what are the things that, you know, um, um, apa nama, they, they can do. Kadang-kadang bila, bila you're stuck in a situation, you, you don't know how to get out. Jadi mungkin dengan bercakap dengan kita, kita boleh maybe cari um, uh, different ways untuk mereka um, connect with us. Yeah? Um, create something fun together. Um, I love this. I, I, I usually do this dalam my classes where the online whiteboards are, are the focal point in the, um, in, in the, in the class itself. Um, in it, because when um, students come in and they use the online whiteboard, they feel that they are part of that uh, construction process. Yeah, they are part of that construction process. The the um, apa nama dia tak rasa macam um, they just dengar 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 dengar. You know, they feel like oh, actually I can say something. Actually I can write something. Actually I can you know other people can see what I'm writing. You know, so that fun bit is the one that I think. Um, uh, students appreciate, yeah. Students appreciate, um, and yeah. Uh, almost to the end now. I'm <laughs> sorry. I'm um, Dr. Maslina. Am I all right? Masa lebih sikit. <laughs> Dr. Maslina. Okay. Tak apa. It's okay. Uh, Dr. Fitri, Press. just proceed. Yeah. No okay. problem. Sikit, sikit je lagi. <laughs> no problem. Sorry. All right. Um, and um, how do you plan uh, for the new semester? Um, find out dulu what courses you're teaching, you know, who you're going to be teaching, what are the courses that they have done before. This is needs analysis lah guys, yeah. Those of you who have done PGD with us, um, apa nama, you know instructional design, the first thing is you need to analyze what you have. Yeah, you have to analyze the resources. You need to know your students. You need to know what you're teaching. So find out the nature and the scope of the courses that you have and then create your instructional plan. You can know the plan. You cannot go into class without a plan. Yeah, find out what exactly you want to show to the students and, and, and how you're going to um, activate the, the, the learning. Yeah, apa learning task yang akan dibuat. Apa assessment yang akan dibuat at the end. Macam mana you nak tahu whether uh, the assessment fits the CLO of the of the course. Yeah, explore your options. This is where it needs a bit of time. <laughs> uh, orang tua macam saya, it takes a lot of time. So I depend quite a lot on Kiman to tell me what is it that works. Yeah, um, and 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 the tools and strategies that we can use with um, these things. Um, it's it's um, apa nama? It's it's um, trial and error. Not all tools out there are uh, suitable for us because, um, you know, kita semua ada preferences sendiri. So, but the thing is, you need to know what's out there. Kalau you don't try, you don't know. Yeah. This is one thing also that I learned from the, the pandemic is that um, we need to apa nama, challenge ourselves to try new things. Memang dia susah. 
Ya memang dia susah A lot of uh, times The learning curve is very steep Tapi um, I think it's worth it Bila kita dah tahu Then you can say Okay This is not for me I don't want to do it You know Then you can make a decision To say that oh, I don't have time for this Tapi kalau kita tak cuba And then bila orang Introduce something new You go like Oh tak nak lah Tak nak lah You know So it doesn't make sense Make an educated um, Apa nama um, Decision By trying Ya yeah, cuba And find out If it works for you It works fine If it doesn't Then you know what Just leave it off Ya yeah? uh, Communicate your concerns Now This is also one thing that um, Saya notice kita uh, Kadang-kadang kita lupa Nak cakap dengan students lah um, I, I have one uh, Particular um, Apa Scenario Yang mana Students uh, Sebenarnya um, Sangat concern About dia punya grade Yeah, um, I I noticed this trend uh, since uh, yang apa bila kita berhenti mengajar face to face masa March tu, the outstanding students in my class, the ones who normally get you know straight A's, yang yang 3.5 above um, sort of apa nama uh, CGPA, they were the ones who were the most stressed because they cannot cope with the different way of learning. Yeah, um, talk to them. Yeah, the chances are because they are they are kind of blinded to want to achieve the grade that they forget to be sane. <laughs> they forget to uh, apa nama to to level themselves and you know try to realign. You know what is it that they want and how are they going to achieve what they want? Because dia punya concentration pada pada selalunya dalam normal semester dia akan target untuk A. Dia nak A saja, ya. Yeah? So kalau kalau uh, tak di kelas, macam mana dia nak make sure lecturer kenal dia? For instance, you know, K- macam mana dia nak make sure yang lecturer akan bagi markah tinggi untuk dia? Sebab dia tak tahu markah tinggi itu akan datang kepada mana. You see what I mean? So um, these are the things that I think we need to keep. Keep talking to the students. Kalau you feel that they are, um, you know, they, they are signs yang mana uh, they are, you know, failing off, they are um, distracted, they are looking at um, different ways of, you know, managing or dealing with their um, online apa, learning. Uh, this is where you can, you know, raise a flag lah and, and maybe bercakap dengan students. Yeah, this is this is important. Kalau saya rasa kalau you if you can uh, call the students up and then and then find out. Yeah, kadang-kadang they they will tell you when it's a private session. Um, and obviously evaluate and and reflect. Yeah, on on your effectiveness. That's my last point. Um, we have to relook all the time. Dia one size fit all memang tak tak jalan lah. Yeah, if there's no one size fit all anyhow. So uh, what works in my class may not work for you. Because maybe your comfort level and my comfort level for the tools that I'm using um, are different. Yeah. Um, jadi, um, it, it really depends on 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 what you you want to do. Yeah. What you want to do, what you're able to do. And and I think we 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 keep that in mind. But yang tadi saya mention um, apa nama? I like to um, videotape uh, my my input tadi. Yeah. The 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 things that I'm teaching. So this is actually data from uh, from tech, tech data. I, I, I got it. I, I screenshot it. Um, and it does say, if you look at the minutes, eh, yang paling tinggi uh, engagement ialah bila minutes tu dalam less than 15. Less than 15. Less than 10 kalau boleh. Yeah, less than 10. Jadi, um, keep your videos short. Jangan buat videos yang panjang-panjang, melilit-lilit. You know, no. Pendek-pendekkan, tak apa. It's okay. Yeah, a few slides berhenti. A few slides berhenti. A few slides berhenti. Yeah, so at least students ada um, apa nama chance untuk um, tengok whenever they can, and they know that each chunk tu ada ada part parts yang lain. Yeah, and then if you ada masa, you explain part ni bercakap tentang apa. Yeah, this part talks about what. So you you um, give a bit of a description so that um, you know students akan uh, ni. Uh, apa nama uh, uh, react ya yeah? and if you want to keep your videos um, succinct you can do a script you can do a storyboard to help you explain yeah the content that you have uh, focus on single topics single 
objective. Jangan cita-cita tinggi sangat. <laughs> Saya selalu mention ni dalam my PG deep class. Jangan cita-cita tinggi sangat. We want to teach the world. Tapi um, even dalam face to face pun sama juga. Um, single, one at a time. One topic, one objective, one at a time. And then organize it. Yeah, so that there's a flow to the presentation. Yeah, walaupun presentation tu pendek-pendek 10 minit, 10 minit, 10 minit tapi ada flow. Yeah, and then create a table of content kalau rajin to help them navigate. Yeah, dalam uh, the videos itself. So they can know kat mana they can pay attention. So um, the last, this is my last slide actually. Um, a tip to survive, well, a bit lah, yeah to survive another semester or perhaps another year of remote teaching is that um, when you have time, do this for yourself. You know, you, you know, tell yourself, what is it I want to focus on? Yeah, I will focus on what? The next question, the next, the next statement that I want you to think about is, what am I grateful for? Yeah, and the last one, and I think which is most important is, I will let go of what? Yeah, because remember tadi kita bercakap tentang um, what do you call it, control? Yeah, we talked about control. A lot of your comments tadi was all about oh tak boleh nak tahu, students faham ke tidak. Tak tahu nak control macam mana kelas but everything's now online and blah blah blah. You know what? This is when you let go. Yeah, Be because when you start thinking about this is what I can do. This is what are my limitations. This is what I'm actually grateful for. Yeah. Um, then you will know. Yang mana satu yang you akan prioritize. So you yourself tak rasa frustrated sangat. A lot of us feel frustrated. Yeah. A lot of us feel frustrated. So, macam saya, because to be honest with you, because I am I am trained, you know, in pedagogy, and when I I cannot teach. It, you know, it made me feel really, really bad. You know, in the first few months of the um, apa nama, MCO, you know, I didn't know what to do. And yet I knew how to teach. You know what I mean? And I trained people how to teach. Jadi, um, what, 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 what I think um, is a, a big takeaway from here is that we, we, we need to evaluate what is it that we know now, you know, and how do we want to progress what is it that is available to us? How much do we actually want this? Yeah. And then what is it that we, we should be grateful for because of the things that we have? Yeah. And then what is it that you can let go? Yang you tak boleh nak control. You tak boleh nak, you know, you tak boleh nak um, do much about. You know, you, the students are not in front of you. Is that your fault? Tidak. Is it anybody's fault? Tidak. You know, is it your fault that students um, apa nama, uh, are worrying about what food on the table for the day? Tidak, it's not. Tapi kita punya responsibility sebagai pencara, sebagai instructor, is that we need to make sure the delivery of our content is good. Yeah, the delivery of our uh, whatever that we're teaching is at the best version that we can produce. Bukannya sap sap soy. <laughs> it's not macam cincai cincai. No, it has to be something which is good and you are proud of. Yeah, jangan jangan buat something yang uh, sebab orang lain semua buat. You know, uh, then it's okay. No, I don't think so. This is this is the time I think um, for us to reevaluate. See where are your strengths. What are the things that you can do? Yeah, within the time that you have, the effort that you have. Um, to produce, you know, something that is manageable for the students, manageable for the students, yeah? So, remember, there are some things that you can't control, let it go, yeah? Let it go, all right? Um, so, that's my last slide, <laughs> and um, thank you so much, everybody, for listening in, and um, yeah, it's really up to us. That's my last, last um, final uh, statement for today. My slides are here in Wakelet. You can um, um, apa nama, take the QR code. Um, all of the readings that I did uh, to prepare for this session is actually there as well. So you can read them. And um, yeah, so thank you so much. I apologize kalau um, other shortcomings. Is there any questions? 
Um, I think I can take questions now, um, Mazlina. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, thank <laughs> you very much for inspiring and more informative sharing from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Fitri. Sekejap saya turn on saya punya video. All right. Okay. Okay, there is a question from Dr. Rehman. Have you answered Dr. Rehman just now, Dr. Fitri? Have you answered his question? I, I, I don't think so, sorry. Uh, all right. Okay, he's asking about, um, he would like oh, to know the details about teaching guidance all right. from your previous slide, yes. Hmm. Uh, so learning guidance is about um, how we help um, students understand the content that um, they need to um, they need to master, yeah. So it's not just the input, but it's also learn teaching them how to understand the input. Yeah, it's teaching them how to understand the input. This is where your pedagogical skills come in. Yeah, this is where your pedagogical skills come in. How do you uh, come up with activities? How do you ask questions in order for students to understand the input that you're trying to teach them? Yeah, so that is learning guidance. Does that, does that make sense, Rehman? <laughs> Let me check whether his answer. Like <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. There is one more question uh, from Dr. Rohana, Associate Professor Dr. Rohana from Prayu. Uh, mm -hmm. Dia tanya, bila kita tanya student, katakan mm -hmm. student A, lama mm -hmm. tunggu, lalu uh -huh. kita panggil nama lain. Adakah yeah. ini menjatuhkan moral student A? Apa cara terbaik untuk handle this situation? Okay. Um, what is your goal when you ask um, questions? Bila kita, kita apa nama? Uh, bila kita panggil students, ialah kita nak tahu apa dia punya understanding kan of the time. Uh, kita nak tahu what is it they, uh, they may have problems with yeah, uh, at that time. Mungkin not, not on the individual students, tapi on the whole class itself. Jadi bila seorang tak jawab, and then you move on to the next one, I think it's okay. Yeah? Sebab apa jawapan yang dapat daripada student lain sebenarnya boleh membantu pelajar yang uh, tidak menjawab tadi. Mungkin dia tidak menjawab sebab mikrofon dia tak elok. You know, uh, There's a lot of students who complain about their processes on their laptop. Um, apa nama? And, and then the, you know, the... Uh, uh, the extra equipment, macam the microphone, the camera, and stuff like that, dia, you know, rosak. Obviously, they, they, they didn't use quality ones, kan? Um, jadi, forgive yourself. Tak apalah, kita tak boleh nak reach semua pun. Tapi at least kita cuba. Yeah? The most important thing ialah focus on that feedback. Jadi, sebab bila kita tanya tu, kita nak bagi feedback. Yeah? Jadi, focus on the feedback. Kalau dia tak boleh nak jawab, um, it's okay tu. Tak ada masalah. Ya, tak ada masalah. Jadi, we just go on to the next one. And then, uh, yang paling penting ialah kita punya the quality of the feedback that we give so that all the students can listen to it and perhaps they would have, you know, further questions that you can also obviously clarify, ya, yeah, as, as per needed. Alright. All right. Okay, um, I think this is not the question but this is the... Um, uh, some comments lah from uh, Dana, from participant uh, Dana J. I agree with the suggestion to show your face, whether in a pre-recorded or live session. Yes. There's just something about seeing the passionate expression of a teacher in mm -hmm. explaining his or her content. I yeah. personally feel that a teacher's patience in delivering content will infect the students as well. That's okay. right. Uh, thank you. Okay. From can, I, can I jawab? Can okay. I jawab sikit uh, Dana, Dana J? Um, I remember you from uh, the PGDIP uh, class you had with us. Um, apa nama? It's, it's, it's quite true. It's like macam bila kita tak buka kamera, it's almost like we're hiding. You know, we are the ones hiding from um, the students. Which is, I, I don't think that's, that's right. Yeah, walaupun dia punya connection low, Tapi kalau kita record, yeah, at least the recording would have your face. So they can watch it whenever they want. Yeah? And um, I would like to also point out um, a, a Twitter um, that uh, Dana, apa, uh, Dana J apa nama, uh, ada hantar. Kita memang, we are not trained to um, create content. Yeah? We're not trained to create content. We're not trained, you know, this digital content is, is, is not for everybody. Yeah, tapi you know what? Because of the situation, this is where remember I always mention this along PGD. 
time to learn, unlearn, and relearn. This is the time to learn, unlearn, and relearn. There are things which we're not comfortable with, but we need to learn this. Yeah, we need to 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 do better and 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 because we are academics, we we are able to do this. Kalau tak tahu, kita tanya orang sebelah. Yeah, kita tanya kawan-kawan lain. So we have resources at our feet, essentially. So um, no excuse for not doing or trying. Yeah. Um, another comment, uh, feedback from uh, Associate Professor Dr. Soba. Well said, yeah. Dr. Fitri. Uh, when students complete their tasks, an expression of praise uh, plays an important role, especially for online learning. Those who couldn't complete, I contact them personally to find out why and assist. Uh, education is for all high bandwidth, medium bandwidth, and low bandwidth with mm -hmm. uh, sophisticated devices, uh, mediocre devices, and minimal devices. Yes. Yes. And yeah, the Taida said we need a PG Deep refresher course for those who took PG Deep at Campus <laughs> Kayu dulu. Basically, those with the age between 45 to 55. Yes. It, itu kena right. cakap kalau um, tekat ini lah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Assalamualaikum, Dr. Fitri. Waalaikumsalam. Ramai, ramai. Apa, saya, saya, saya daripada awal tadi, saya memang uh, uh, apa tu, uh, start uh, viewing and listening to your to your, to your uh, speech today and yeah. uh, presentation today. And it seems like most of the participants, uh, dia, bila Dr. Fitri on, dia kata, wow, this is like a uh, they immediately wanted to join PGD <laughs> so, you are like the duta lah of PGD lah sekarang dah tak tahu lah I mean before before we end as well yeah. I would like to actually appreciate and um, um, you for you know uh, agreeing to be the first speaker for our <laughs> workshop and training for 2000, uh, 2021 lah memang uh, we need this sort of injection of uh, motivation uh, for our academics as well. Although we have started um, in emergency remote uh, teaching ni daripada March 2020 mm -hmm. lah kan. Tapi mm -hmm. I think yelah, along the way as, as what you said, we need to learn and learn and relearn. So yes. we need to find, I mean, yes. um, baru tadi pun kita, saya dengan Norma Zina <laughs> ni pun, reflect ourselves um, how to improve our you know, online learning. teaching and learning yeah. because uh, we have to go through, we are going through the process yeah. of uh, improving ourselves. So don't be too, don't be too pressure on ourselves as well yes. um, because um, we are here to, to, to learn mm. uh, but as academician, we need to always improve, right? And mm. to give the best to our students. Yeah. So thank you so much for being being the sort of Drive the injection of drive yes. motivation for the <laughs> academic. It seems that Suma, yeah, Suma wrote here the feedbacks here, inspiring, motivating. Thank you for the sharing, amazing sharing, and um, I, I would like to also, I mean, the the the, the gist of your your presentation just now, yeah. you focus um, on um, the, the the starting from the plan itself, okay, mm. from start until finish. So yes. not. Um, emphasize too much on <coughs> the tools and gadgets. Hmm. Um, okay. I mean, at the end of the day, of course, we have uh, uh, various um, uh, tools that you can explore and, and choose which uh, hmm. suit for your own needs or your learners' need. But but I think the the main aim is that process too. Yeah, you can uh, you can uh, go through the planning, the input, the activities that you have to plan and of course how you assess students and how you integrate um, technology in mm -hmm. making that happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, thank you very much. Um, is there anything? Yes, else? yes. Uh, there is another one question oh, from yeah. Muhammad Faizal for you, I think. Yeah. Assalamualaikum Dr. Fitri. One last question. How are we going to leverage online teaching approach between excellent student and not yet excellent student? <laughs> <laughs> the um, okay. My question back to you, Faisal. How do you gauge? How do you do that in a normal class? Like you know, uh, when you're teaching face to face, how do you deal with excellent students, mediocre students, and weak students? How do you do that? Can you can you respond to me, Faisal? 
you can you can turn on your mic right you can uh, you, you you Faiza, you can unmute your mic we have to wait uh Faiza to un to <laughs> respond to tv3 yeah yeah <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Wan Ormeza. She's my friend from school. <laughs> okay. yeah, thank you so much for coming. Wan Ormeza. Yeah, okay. Now, um, tak apa, it's okay. Um, so going back to Faizal's question. Kalau uh, kita ada different... Yes, Ayah. Faizal said, uh, oh, he cannot do that. So sorry, okay. Dr. Fitri, cannot give answer. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. That's fine. Um, kalau, um, apa nama, this is an example of tadi punya question lah. <laughs> Macam mana kalau student tak reply. Um, okay. Now, bila bila kita mengajar normal class, we, we apa nama, we tend to have, ya, yeah, mana students yang memang competent, ya, yeah, they're, they're able to run with the content. Uh, with minimal guidance. There are some who, who need uh, a bit more than others. Jadi macam mana kita nak handle masa kita uh, mengajar online? Now, bila kita mengajar online, kita tak fokus kepada um, uh, students yang uh, apa yang sangat-sangat competent. Kita fokus kepada semua. Ya, Kita bagi apa yang kita boleh buat. We can, what we can um, uh, present to everyone. Yeah, everyone in the class. It's it's not. Is I I think this is where um, we start to address uh, equitable um, apa tu equal opportunity to education. Yeah, um, walaupun there are some yang mungkin um, can do better because of their uh, the tools that they have, tapi the quality of the content again is king. Content kita kena clear. Content kita kena bukan saja untuk pelajar yang excellent pelajar yang uh, baru nak belajar, baru nak menampak, baru nak try, baru nak cuba itu pun boleh uh, di apa difahami. So that is where it, apa our skills come in as the instructor. So kita kena try and test to see um, what are the things that um, work, what are the things that do not work, you know, and then probably there are things that we can improve along the way. So there's no one right recipe for it. Tapi um, I think um, apa nama, um, at least we make an effort um, to try and make sure that our content is good. So nobody can say that uh, masuk kelas uh, apa, Dr. Faizal uh, tak faham Dr. Faizal cakap apa. You know, nobody would say that. So you want to avoid that kind of um, apa nama, uh, feedback ya, daripada, daripada pelajar. Jadi ataupun daripada sesiapa pun. And this is where kita punya uh, content knowledge is very, very important. Yeah, kita punya content knowledge, the way that we know the things that we are teaching. So jangan half big, jangan baca daripada textbook. <laughs> we have to actually know what we're teaching. Yeah, itu yang pertama sekali. Sebab daripada content yang kita tahu, then kita tahu macam mana nak um, adjust. Ya, yeah? banyak mana kita boleh uh, chunk our content kepada our students. Okay, that's it, I think. <laughs> Thank right. you so much. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, we come to the end of the workshop. So, uh, yeah. thank you very much, uh, Associate Professor Dr. Fitri Suraya, yeah. for your uh, valuable sharing. And I really hope that uh, our participants are able to use all the knowledge and sharing from Dr. Fitri for, uh, to, uh, on workshop, today's workshop, in order to develop a new, um, what we call new transformation for our next best uh, <laughs> online teaching and learning. Yeah. So, um, so we hope that you will be getting some inspiration, okay, to conducting uh, the next master uh, online teaching. And uh, to all participants, I would like to uh, remind everyone that we will have another workshop for the next week uh, at 10 February, uh, entitled Google Tools in Teaching and Learning Series 1. Uh, by uh, Dr. Shariza from uh, University of Malaysia Terengganu. So uh, I really hope that you can register on our uh, workshop for the next week. So thank you very much uh, for your time and participation in this workshop. And really think, uh, thankful to uh, Dr. Fitri because you accept our invitation for today. <laughs> no problem, thank, thank you. you. Uh, Dr. Fitri, you will share the slides and yes. Uh, yes. Content, yes. Right, with us. Yeah, it's already on the wicket. Oh, okay. So mm -hmm. later we will share that. We will email to participants, to participants uh, okay. together with the evaluation form. 
All right. So cool. we will share with the video as well. And right. this, uh, uh, this video we will upload in our Come website as well. Right. Okay. So thank, thank you very you. much, Dr. Fitri. Thank you. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank you, right. thank you to all.